I think um, the speakers that came before me here, especially from Nihau, they, they work very closely with us. And I think we, what she was saying is, is, is correct. There's, uh, the pressure on our beds is extremely high. We're not necessarily buckling, but we are really under extreme pressure, not only from maternity, also from other areas. I was on your TV about orthopedics not long ago, but today we can focus on maternity. There are a number of factors, Tepiso, <clears throat> that are at play. Maybe before you get to those Eastern factors, Cape. because I want to get clarity on this, because you say you certainly yes. not buckling, but you are under pressure. The department last year described this situation as a problem and not a crisis. But for those women who have had to undergo those extremely uncomfortable conditions, some of which endanger, and I'm sure I don't have to tell you this, uh, not only their lives, but the possibility the life of uh, the uh, baby, that the, the babies that they're carrying, I, d I think they would describe it as a crisis. Understandably so. I guess whatever perspective you come from, when I talk about uh, extremely extreme pressure on our beds, I mean, uh, truly, we don't have enough beds to actually meet the demand. We do have contingency plan, as it was stated earlier on, that we have other hospitals that are ramping up the capacity of maternity beds in the Nelson Mandela Metro. That's just a contingency plan. <clears throat> The long-term plan or the medium-term plan is to actually almost double the number of maternity beds that are in the Nelson Mandela Metro in keeping with the increasing population and the increasing pregnancy rate in that part of Eastern Cape. So that will ultimately be the solution. These plans are in place and they would be effective that now if it was not for the delay that was caused by the COVID pandemic, we would have completed the project of increasing the number of beds. Those are in action. They're the final stages of completion now. So by end September, August, September, we should have 150 additional beds in the, in the, in the Nelson Mandela Metro. Mm. That's where we are now. But I think the crisis at hand is exactly what you are referring to. It's about those mothers who come to our facilities and we cannot turn them back. Um, a pregnant woman is, is, means two lives. It's the mother and it's the child. Even if those people sometimes have to take floor beds, as long as they get the, t the kind of care that they deserve and they come out safe as a baby and the mother comes out healthy after the delivery, that's our main objective. Mm -hmm. We understand and appreciate that it is certainly not dignity for anyone to take a floor bed or to wait on a corridor. Hence, we are finding extra beds in other facilities as we have done in Nelson Mandela Bay. We have a holding ward, an extra holding ward in, Port, in PE Provincial Hospital, which is about five kilometers from Toranginza. It is all there to protect and to make sure that the dignity of those people and their safety is ensured. I guess that I, we do. Dr. Kondosha, we have done. I guess I'm just wondering for how long this has been allowed to continue. I think in 2021, already there was a, a, a pregnant mother who shared a, a horrific story. There's been uh, reports of uh, infant deaths at the hospital. So I, I hear you saying that the number of pregnant women who are coming to the hospital for your services is unexpected, but there have been quite a number of systemic failures that have been ongoing that have been reported at this hospital. Thanks, Sebiso, for raising that. I think initially I was trying to get to that area. It may sound very boring, and maybe it's coming from you. It's not a systemic, systemic failure. It's the configuration of health facilities in the Nelson Mandela Metro. is historically fraught. It's no different from the central and the eastern region of the province. For many years, pre-1994, the focus of infrastructure for health facilities in the Nelson Mandela Metro was around tuberculosis for black and colored communities. There were very few general hospitals that would offer the full package of services. You understand it's on record, that is systemic. There were eight TB hospitals there, and there was only one general hospital which was based in Kariecha today, which is previously called Utenek. That is a systemic problem, which is exactly what we're dealing with. 
in terms of restructuring those hospitals to offer full package of services, including maternity beds. That is the work that is underway that I was referring to that is now almost in the final stages. It should have happened faster, I agree with you, was then if there was no disruption from the COVID pandemic. It's something we're working hard every day to make sure it comes into line. I think the speaker earlier on referred to Mbilweni, previously a TB hospital, that is being converted to offer full package of, of, of general hospital services at level one, including maternity beds. PE Provincial is doing exactly the same to establish maternity beds at, uh, at an existing hospital. So that's a reconfiguration that is underway. And there's other hospitals as well that are coming into line to increase their bed capacity, including maternity beds. It's a historical problem. You are correct when you say it's not a system failure. It's a manifestation of our history. This is what, this is the reality of Nelson Mandela Bay. You don't hear of that kind of thing even go to KSD or Tambo area and even around uh, Buffalo City, because there are hospitals that are at level one who offer maternity beds appropriately. But the western side of the, uh, the western side of the Eastern Cape is the most disadvantaged in relation to the structure. That's a historical fact. It's a systemic issue, and it's what this government is trying to put in place and correct. Mm. That's exactly what we're doing every day. But so the, next year, we're not going to be talking about this You keep on saying interchangeably that you agree, yes, it's a systemic problem, and then you go back to saying that's a reconfiguration problem. Can you decide which one is it? Is it a reconfiguration problem, the challenges that you're facing now? And, I mean, at some point, you heard now how they talk about staffing issues but at some point the Department of Health in the province was uh, blaming Nahal for some of the uh, problems that you are describing uh, the young mother who suffered that horrific ordeal in 2021 the hospital said it's a matter of consent at some point you were saying that it's the lack of donations of a formula so uh, you you say there's reconfiguration there's systemic at one point you said systemic but no yes which one is it Look, Tepi, so I, I, I don't remember, and it was certainly not me blaming a union for a, a health systemic problem. I would never do that. Certainly, that's, that was probably a very narrow view or perspective on the issue. The real issue, uh, Tepi, so in Nelson Mandela Bay, you have a population of 1,2 to 1,6 million estimate. In Nelson Mandela Bay, you have one district hospital, which is UTNA Provincial Hospital. And then you have a regional and a tertiary hospital. That is what I'm talking about. That platform is inappropriate for the kind of population and the disease burden in that population. You know, so that's exactly when we talk about reconfiguring the health platform. If we don't do that, we're not going to be able to provide enough beds for maternity and other conditions. We will solve maternity today because of contingency systems that are in place. But two months down the line, you'll be inviting me to this interview. There may not be enough beds for other kinds of categories of patients, including mental health. Okay. So we're talking about a platform that is being reconfigured to address this matter once and for all, not in the manner that has happened in the past. Do you have a timeline that would uh, bring some relief to some of these mothers before... Uh, another unfortunate incident happens. I mean, I would hate to hear of another infant death as a result of some of these uh, challenges. It's our job. It's our job to save every baby. It's our job to save every mother under all circumstances, as I've indicated earlier. You know, that's our job. It's not about long-term plan. That's our daily function to prevent these. And we are not saying there will never be adverse uh, outcomes in pregnancy. They are multifactorial. Some reasons are beyond our control, but mm -hmm. what is within our control is what we avoid okay. to experience. Do every you have day. a so timeline every mother that you... who comes to our facility must come out safe? Yes. We are increasing some new additional beds. 150 beds are coming to line by end of September 2023. There will be another batch of beds that comes into line again in the following year from Mbilweni District Hospital. And there will be additional beds that are coming through over the next three years. We're hoping to double 
our number of beds over the next two years. Those will be coming in batches, you know. However, that is not the only way we're responding to this crisis. Ultimately, we also want to reduce the number of unwanted pregnancies that are putting a strain on the health system. So increasing beds is not enough. We must also prevent unwanted birth or pregnancies, which are becoming a problem, a significant proportion of the cases that are putting pressure on the system. I repeat, unwanted pregnancies. I'm not infringing on any right of any woman to fall pregnant. I'm talking about those that are unwanted. <clears throat> if we reduce those, they will make a, a tremendous uh, relief. They'll give us a tremendous relief to the health system. Mm. We do understand the issues of staffing are also there, but those are also being addressed. You will know very well that since last year, Livingston has recruited and uh, Torangis has recruited a lot of midwives and nurses to right. try and mitigate the crisis. So the issue is not just bad, it's just bad, it's also staffing. But ultimately, is women delivering closer to their homes in the safest environment that the department should right. provide in line with the constitution of this country.